Well, when you're ready. Oh, you have a chart? Sure. One's pristine, one's untouched, one's pure. All of that's no longer there anymore. Stripped down, torn apart, shipped away, piece of our hearts. Yet still we breathe. Like the wind, we still move. Like the waves, we rise high. Like the sun, we never die. We will stay standing. Hear our calling. We rooted to the ground. We're here to stay. No staying quiet. We stand united. We rooted to the ground. Can't tear us down. We're here to stay. Oh. Hello everyone from wherever you're hearing. Um, I'm Isabella Santana. I'm indigenous from the Patasha Nation south of Bahia in Brazil. I'm an actress, um, dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> I work as a producer at If Not Than Who and also as a communicator at a Visibility Badge Indigena. And I'm very happy to announce that today we have here with us Mia Kami. Hi Mia. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so, you're a singer, storyteller. Tell me a little bit about you. Who is Mia Kami? Well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am a daughter of the Pacific. So I come from the s South Pacific. Um, I am originally from Tonga, which is a small island in the Pacific Ocean. We have a population of 100,000. Um, I am... My day-to-day -day job is I'm a high school teacher at Dupo College Toloa in Tonga, which is an all-boys boarding school back home. Um, but my passions include uh, climate action, ocean conservation, and indigenous sovereignty. And so the way that I um, articulate that is through talking story through song. Um, and so, yes, as you said, I, I write music and I sing, and uh, I like to write my songs around these things that I care about. Nice. Um, and you're also, um, do you see yourself as an activist as well? Yes, I see myself as an artivist, as an okay. activist that uses art as a way of kind of uh, telling our stories and putting our messages out there. Yeah, and how was this process for you of like recognizing yourself as an artivist? Is, uh, was organic just happen or there was something that you you saw and lived in your when you were a child or something like this? Well, I always grew up around music, mm -hmm. um, and so I grew up singing with my family, with my sisters, um, and, and in terms of writing, writing came to me a lot later, uh, when I was about 12. Um, I started to write, and at first it was kind of just something that I thought, oh, it'd be really cool if people knew that I was a person that wrote songs, <laughs> you know, because being a 12-year-old, you think, like, that's the coolest thing you could be doing, um, but as I got older, I, I started to to connect with a lot of issues that were happening in the region. Um, for example, just the like decolonization became a very big part of something that I really cared about, um, the decolonization process in terms of decolonizing the mind and the way that we see things. And uh, so I started to write songs about those things. And so um, 
as a result of that, I didn't intend to to use music as a form of advocacy work. Um, it was just it was more something that I stumbled upon almost accidentally, but then it was almost also on purpose in terms of like it just happened. Mm -hmm. But it was something that was meant to just happen, I feel, because it's something that I feel truly, truly passionate about. And I feel like it's the best way that I can contribute to to, you know, fighting for things that I believe in that I feel are important for the region, for the Pacific region. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the Pacific region. We were talking about it before recording. Um, I wanted to know about your people, the Tongan people, right? And, mm -hmm. the, and Fiji and all of this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm very proud to be a Pacific Islander. Um, I, was, I grew up in Tonga for the first uh, 10 years of my life. Um, and then we moved to Fiji with my family, where I lived in Fiji for 14 years. Um, and I finally just moved back to Tonga this year in May. Um, but being from the Pacific is, is really special because we believe that we are ocean people. We are people of the ocean. We belong to the ocean. Um, the ocean never belonged to us, you know, and so we, we see the ocean as something that doesn't separate us, but something that connects us. And so I think what's really special about the Pacific region is even though we're on completely different lands, yet we still have very similar cultures. There's always an overlap in our different cultures like we have our subregions like Melanesia, Micronesia and Polynesia um, and these subregions were categorized by the colonizers um, and yet even though it's viewed as these different separated parts there are so many similarities between our cultures uh, for example the there's the culture of community you know and I'm sure you can understand this and relate to this as an indigenous person as well where being a part of your community is really essential and when we do things, we do it for our community. There isn't a lot of um, individual thinking, right? It's not a, like you don't go into your community and act for yourself. You're going into com your community to act for those around you, for your, for your people, right? And so I think that's something very beautiful about the Pacific is that there's this connection. Even though we're separated by the ocean, it's still something that brings us together. And all of us can understand that nature is an essential part of our cultures and our identity. And so it's something that we have to nurture. And unfortunately, as time goes, it's something that we're losing, but it's also now with the work that you do, with the work that a lot of other people are here for Climate Week for, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that we're trying to bring back, the whole belief of traditional knowledge and indigenous guardianship. And that's something that's just, that stretches across the Pacific, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and. You speak through the land um, with your music, right? And I wanted to know, like, um, like when we are indigenous artists or um, native, and you know, Pacific Islanders, like you said, um, we inherently like everything we do is political, even though we are not like um, our existence is political because we've been through a lot and we are resisting and and. In the world we live in, where there's lots of destruction, mm. we are calling it Anthropocene now. Um, we we are still alive and maintaining our cultures and our memories and the memories of our ancestors. And I wanted to know from you um, if you feel like um, you feel any um, res like. If you feel, uh, if you have a sense of responsibility as a young activist, like sometimes it's something that I, I think a lot. Like sometimes I feel it's heavy. Sometimes I feel it, I, it needs to be light. Do you feel that? Is that, is that something you feel? Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's something that we all feel when we go into this kind of work, right? Um, it's, it is a lot of responsibility and it's a lot of thinking and making sure that when you're trying to articulate our purpose and why we're coming into these spaces, you want to do it in the best way possible, not for yourself, but for the community that you're coming with, right? Like when we come into these spaces, we're not coming on our own. We're here with our ancestral connections. We're here mm -hmm. with our people, our community. Like I said, it was, it's not just us, right, in this fight. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of responsibility. And, and it does get really heavy 
it can be very overstimulating as well. Um, but, you know, I, I do feel like there's a reason that we come here, that there's a reason that we come into these spaces um, to ensure that we're represented well and correctly and that we have a voice in the conversations and that our voices are uplifted instead of shoved aside and only pulled over when they need, like, a, a sob story, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. When you say that, that there is a reason, I always remember that phrase, um, that we are like the continuity of our grandmother, the dream of our grandmothers. Oh, and that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I, that's something that I carry with myself, like, whenever I feel it's too heavy, you know? Yeah. Is there any advice or thing um, you like to hear or remember when you're feeling everything is too heavy or, you know? I think it's really important that we be kind to ourselves in this kind of work. I think um, I have a tendency to to sort of discredit myself a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you doubt the things that you say. And I'm sure you can understand this mm -hmm. too, you know. I know. <laughs> like everything that you're saying is like, <laughs> is, this, is this good enough? Good Am enough, I going to yeah. step on toes? And the worst part about stepping on toes is you don't want to step on the toes of your people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't mind, you know, like, pushing against whatever is coming at me. But, like, the last thing I want is to disappoint, you know, the people that I come from, the places that I come from. And so I think, um, but then I, I, it's important that I can remind myself or that we can remind ourselves that coming into these spaces, you're going to be uncomfortable, you know, and I think discomfort is a good sign of change happening and so like you know when you're stuck in your comfort zone it's it's not if you feel too comfortable then it shows that there's still there's still work that needs to be done right mm -hmm. yeah what about you do you how do you feel about that yeah like i i asked you that because it's something that i wanted to hear from you as a young woman like because i feel sometimes that it is heavy right um I think, um, as you said, the process of our communities was very different um, in the Pacific Island in, in Bahia, Brazil. Um, in Bahia, Bahia was the place of first contact of the invasors in Brazil. So we've, done, we've gone through a lot, more than 500 years of contact. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so we've, we've been through a lot of migration and our languages um, almost disappeared, things like this. And... And I am in this, I was born, I am in the second um, generation of migration. So I was born not having um, the chance to um, learn the culture right in the land, you know. So um, I am in this moment of returning. My, my, my grandmother was a huge activist. So I, I feel like it's a, it's a huge responsibility um, because by being born out of the community, I had more opportunities, for example, to learn English and mm. to be here with you yeah. that um, girls from my community didn't have. So it's such a huge responsibility to be here. Yeah. And to me, like um, the best thing and the best, the thing that makes me the most comfortable is just like remembering my grandmother, the struggle she had for me to be here because there is a purpose for everything, like you said. And also to always be in touch um, with my loved ones who are in the community and who are in the village. Um, and just having this support is very important to me. So I think it's all based in, in communication from the loved ones that are present here and also from the ancestors. So, yeah, I think, yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> and also from nature, like being in the sea and, and like, yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I mean by, like, connection, right? Even though we're on completely different ends of the world, we have very similar beliefs about connection and, and like, our connection to nature, to our families, to our ancestors. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I can relate too much when you say, like, I don't want to step on my community, like, I don't want to do anything wrong. Mm. I want to do everything right. And it, <laughs> You <Yeah>. know? <laughs> no, exactly. And yeah. it's a lot of pressure, right? It is. Yeah. It is. It See, is. because... Some of one of the problems that I had or one of the dilemmas that I had was 
like I said, I grew up in Fiji mm-hmm. for 14 years. I'm not Fijian. I don't have any Fijian heritage. Both my parents are full Tongan. Mm-hmm. But we lived in Fiji for 14 years. And um, whenever I come into these spaces, uh, before I moved back home, I always felt like I didn't have a place to say that I'm here to represent Tonga. Mm-hmm. Because the last thing I wanted was to say I represent Tonga and for people back home to be like, you haven't even been home. Like, you haven't been in Tonga. You haven't lived our experiences. Who are you to go into these spaces and say, I'm here to represent my country when you haven't been in your country, right? And so it was this whole thing where I felt like I needed to go home. Like, I can't come into these spaces and try and speak on Tongan experiences when I haven't been living that Tongan experience just yet. And then at the same time, I also couldn't speak on the Fiji experience mm-hmm. because <laughs> I'm not I'm not from Fiji. You know, that's not my land. That's not where I belong fully, right? And so that's why I think it's really important, like reconnecting with mm-hmm. our identity, with our heritage is important when we come into these spaces because the last thing you want is for someone to be like, you can't, you can't talk about our experiences because you haven't lived them. And so right now I'm still finding my feet back home, but it's like the best feeling just being back, you know, and reconnecting and... Um, getting a glimpse into the life that I've missed out on because I was in Fiji for so long. And it also is why I'm really happy that I I get to teach at the school that I'm teaching at right now. Um, and like I said, it's an all boys boarding school and like it's in the middle of the bush, like, you know, and the boys don't have their technology mm-hmm. at school. And so um, it's just a really good way to kind of get back in touch with the community, um, at not not from the top down, but from the bottom up which makes it all the more special because that's that's how I remember growing up in Tonga as well. So it's almost like I'm kind of going back and looking into like my inner child because when I moved to Fiji, I was only 10. Um, and then now I'm, I'm back home as a 24-year-old, kind of just absorbing myself back into what it feels like to be home. Does that make sense? It makes so much sense. Yeah. Like I can relate so much to that because I am in the same um, path of returning, mm. and it. I I was telling this to to one of um, our guests that we have um, yesterday, that like um, it's not. It wasn't your choice, right? And like, and it's important to embrace this returning. Like, okay, I wasn't born here, but I want to learn, mm. and I'm I'm here to stay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see what yeah. you did there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. About Wh- why we are here to stay. <laughs> so, like, like <laughs> well, like you said, right? It's um, it's an it's we're. <laughs> say this. It's um, it's an important reminder that we're that we exist, right? That we're not these these sad little groups of communities that have lost their way minorities minorities yeah you know where and i feel like we tend to be put on a pedestal when they need like the problem to be shown you know like the problem is happening to these people and we need to help them and that's kind of like the only way that we're perceived or the way that we're shown but when i say like we're here to stay i'm saying like we're literally here to stay like you can't get rid of us But then it seems like when you're not prioritizing the solutions for the problems that we're facing as a result of people outside of our communities, it's not us that's contributing to climate change, for example, right? Climate change is the biggest crisis happening in the Pacific right now. And we are like on the front lines directly. And we contribute the least to climate change, and yet we're suffering the brunt of it. You know, we're facing extreme natural disasters that are just happening more often the severity is worse we are experiencing sea level rise loss of land as a result of sea level rise and so it seems like when we bring pacific communities into the conversation a lot of the time it's like oh just a reminder these guys are are dying you know they're losing their culture and their lands and their ocean is unhealthy and that's kind of the only time that we're brought into the conversation but we're not centered as people that also have the solutions for these things, right? Mm-hmm. And like I said, traditional knowledge, indigenous guardianship, like we were the sole protectors of our land and our oceans. And yet we're only brought into the conversation when they need like the problem to be shown. No, we should be the solutions. We should be the ones making the solutions. 
And so that's why I'm saying we're here to stay because you need us. They need us in that conversation. They need us at the decision making level. You, you know? So that's, yeah, that's what I mean by like we're here, we exist. Bring us back into the main conversations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They only want us like suffering mm -hmm. and sad, you know? Yeah. They don't want to see us as like strong, empowered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that yeah. is something. That's something that I'm learning, and I said to me all the time, like, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to dream. I deserve to do what I yeah. want. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. and and yeah, and even though we are dreaming and doing what we want, we do this with so much responsibility, you know. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's it's just a process of not making it too heavy and mm -hmm. like embracing it. When we were talking about um, this reclamation process you've been going through and mm. all this representation stuff, I can relate so much to that. And one, one thing that I didn't mention that um, is, I think it's my main, my main, the main path I go through in everything I do are the elders, mm. like listening to the grandmothers and to the grandfathers and the grand grandmothers. Yeah. I think it's the thing that helped me the most, like, just check them out, see if we're doing good, what mm. they think of what we're doing, and or sometimes just be beside them, like observing them doing yeah. stuff, <laughs> preparing oh. fish or anything, <laughs> you know, like no, exactly. <laughs> collecting seeds, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's what we cherish in the Pacific as well. Like in Tonga, like respecting our elders is huge, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I'm I'm all for for youth voices being uplifted. Um, but I think sometimes that we tend to drown out the voices of our elders in the process. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing is we can't fix our future if we're not learning from the mistakes of our past, right? And, um, and the thing is, I feel that a lot of people see the past as somewhere where we learn from our mistakes, but inst and instead we should also be highlighting the good things that happened in our past to keep them. Right, like there are things that you want to keep and you want to carry from our past into the future. So that's our culture, our traditions, our languages, and um, and so I I value intergenerational conversation. Right, it's not about just like having the youth speak. It's about listening to our elders as well. And so I love that you brought that up because it's yeah. so essential. And and what you said, it's very important too. Like I wanted to ask more about it. Like you said that the youth is not bringing the voices of the elders. As a young woman, um, what do you think that, um, and, and youth activist as well, we are both, um, mm. how do you see that, like um, what we are doing now? Is there something that, like how how do you see the youth movement now? Do you have any 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 critics? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Or um, any advice for us? I mean <laughs> <laughs> Anything we should be doing and yeah. paying more attention to? I think um so I, I have this conversation with my dad quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um and honestly shout out to my dad because he's he's a lot of the reason why I I enjoy what I'm doing. What is his um, name? His name's Taholo. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Taholo. Hi, Taholo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but him and I like to have this conversation. And he he basically was the one who made me think more critically about um, the youth movement, right? And uh, while I feel it is definitely important, you know, that you bring young people into the conversation on how are we going to ensure a better future? Because, of course, like, it's our future that our elders are fighting for or that um, leaders are fighting for. And so it's essential that you include young people. But I feel like we've gotten to a point in some certain spaces, not all of them, in some spaces where we value, or maybe not, val value is probably not the right word. We, we care about youth voices so strongly that it's their opinions that we take into consideration the most, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it becomes an issue when these particular voices that we're censoring from young people doesn't take into consideration the stories and the voices of our elders. Do you do you get what I'm what I'm saying? I get it. Yeah, because it's like it's like there's a lot of youth movements and there's a lot of uh, youth-led movements. Um, 
but then these movements tend to stray from listening and hearing the stories of our elders because like I said if we're not listening to our elders how are we going to know the important things to bring forward right how are we going to learn the mistakes learn from their mistakes it's not just a matter of one generation it's about intergenerational conversation and so in the pacific we say talanoa um so talanoa is to speak and so intergenerational talanoa is important um yeah so that would be that would be my little criticism there um but you know i got to give props to like youths that are leading the way paving the way that's great but we got to bring the stories of our elders with us too cuz we're storytellers right so we got to bring that with us Mm. I can't even believe it's almost half an hour now. Is it? it? Yeah, it's almost half an hour that we we oh my days. Yeah. So okay. good because the time passed so fast because yeah. the conversation is good. Oh, I almost don't want this to end. Yeah. <laughs> I would stay for more th- yeah. more <laughs> one hour here talking yeah. and more. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And and to wrap up, um I wanted to know if um You wanted to share anything you've heard from an elder or anything you want to share like a teaching that you carry within your heart to walk in this land. There's a lot <laughs> that I could share um because I I have a lot of conversations uh with my grandmother as well. Uh my late grandfather as well. Um a lot of my relatives i just enjoy sitting and listening it's it's such a joy to hear the stories that they share right um but i think something really special is is the fact that we have our elders with us while we still have them that we can still listen to these stories that they're telling Cuz I feel like, you know, written history is one thing or like stories and writing is one thing. But w- at our core, we are old storytellers. Whether you're from the Pacific, whether you're an indigenous person, whether wherever you come from. And so what I've learned, I I can't share a story specifically because unfortunately there's not a lot of time and I would continue forever <laughs> if this was the case. <laughs> But I think what I would just want to finish off with is We need to take the time to listen to our elders as much as they as much as they as much as we can, right? Because the the only way that we can continue to share traditional knowledge and indigenous guardianship and the importance of being part of the land and the sea and nature itself is if we're listening to our elders and taking the time to listen to them and valuing it because when we have written history it's a lot easier to just read it off a paper and that's it mm-hmm. but the beauty about storytelling through through voice or through song or through dance is that you have to sit and watch and listen you know you have to be present and being present is such an important part of the movement you know you don't want to just be there just because you're there to take notes and to go and move on and stick it on a poster you need to be there so that when you're part of whatever mission that you're on or whatever movement that you're a part of you know that while you were in the process you were there you were all there like fully completely there and so i think that's what i would wrap up on thank you Oh wow, you're such a beautiful person. <laughs> <laughs> And you are too. I'm oh really enjoying God. this conversation. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. Oh. By shoe, it's a beautiful by shoe. By shoe. By shoe. Nichi by shoe. Nichi. Nichi. Nichi by shoe. It's very yeah. Nichi by shoe. Nichi by shoe. We would say. We would say. Nichi by shoe. Paka ofa ofa. 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 Yeah, so that means beautiful. Oh, yes. So, thank you for having <laughs> me. Thank you. And how can I keep following you? Tell everyone that is listening to us oh, how sure. c- where can I find your work? Um, my music is on Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube. Um, you can just search up my name. <laughs> it's there. Uh, yeah. Instagram? Instagram, just my name again. 
yeah, so you can go ahead and see what I'm up to every now and then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and listen to this podcast too. I'm so excited for like when I hear whoever else is here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so yeah. you guys don't forget to follow Impact Storytellers here in Spotify and also If Not Us Then Who and Visibilidade Indigena too. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes. that's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Like the wind we still move, like the waves we rise high, like the sun we never die. Like the wind we still move, like the waves we rise high, like the sun we never die. We are standing, hear our calling, we to the ground we're here to stay no staying quiet we stand united we rooted to the ground can't tear us down we're here to stay oh in you and I, in you and I, there is hope, there is strength, there is power, there is change in you and I, in you and I, like the wind we still move, like the waves we rise high, like the sun we never die. No staying quiet, we stay.